Hello and welcome to this tutorial with me, Rory from Hard Production, and today I'm sitting in for Sonic Academy to give you an overview and a guide on FabFilter's awesome Pro Q2 EQ plugin. So this first video is just going to be going over some of the features and basically showing you where everything is. And then in the second video, we'll be giving you sort of a real world example of how to use it and how beneficial this amazing tool can be. So what we're going to do is firstly just go over some of the features. So starting at the top here, this is our main sort of navigation window, if you like. So it's obviously got the logo there. Then we have some undo and redo buttons. We've got here some reference points so a and b referencing so you can just switch between it just by clicking on it like that and obviously you can then copy certain edits and parameter changes that you've made onto the b and then you can just so, sort of do a quick a and b reference like that and you can copy them using that copy button then to the right of that we have our presets so you can just sort of flick through all the other presets there so pretty straightforward and then it's got another cool helpful feature within the plugin which is this help icon here which if you click on it you can then sort of customize it to basically tell you any information that you want to know about certain parameters so if i just go on here and highlight that and just leave my mouse there it will then tell you what those particular features mean and then again going back onto the referencing it will tell you what they are so that is super helpful then to the right we can obviously go into a full screen mode if you want to sort of get a bit more precise with all your cuts and your dips and your notches and boosts and things like that so you simply just click that and then it will go up like that then obviously you've got your main interactive window here, which basically shows you all of your audio that's going through it. So if I just press play, you can see that our audio is then going to show. And then to the right of that, we have basically our metering. So basically telling you how loud or how quiet certain bits of your track or element are. Now, what, there's one bit missing to the right of this, which is your metering as well. So if you click down here, the bottom right, and then click this little tab here, it will then give you a metering. So if I press play again, you can then see what levels you're reaching that way. Then to the bottom left here, we have a piano roll feature. Now this is really cool because it basically tells you what key or what note you're basically hitting or you're boosting or you're basically reducing. So it will tell you what key of a piano roll that you're basically attenuating. Okay, so if I go to here and I hover that around there, I'm on G sharp three, which again is really, really powerful and really handy because then you can start really getting a lot of your elements in tune with your track. So you can start doing some dips of frequencies that aren't in the key of your track. So you can get everything ringing together really nicely and get everything fitting in just that bit extra better. Then to the right of that, we have a MIDI learn. So then you can basically auto map or basically MIDI map your parameters like knobs or anything like that to then do sort of sweeps and other different effects like that. So if you're not necessarily used to looking at graphic EQ, you can then sort of go by ear and then start really honing in and tuning things that way as well. Again, which is really handy. It's a different way of working. So definitely experiment with that because that can give you another, another edge if you like. And then who knows, it might work for you fabulously. Then to the right of that, we have basically our EQing type, our processing modes, if you like. So if we click on that, it will give us three different options. So zero latency, natural phase, and linear phase. Now, I'm not going to go too much into detail what those particular ones mean because it kind of is a topic all on its own. So, But basically, if you stick on zero latency, that will cover pretty much every eventuality of EQing that you're going to come across. It basically just fixes and basically changes the magnitude of the EQ curves within your element. So zero latency will give you quite a broad magnitude curve. So it's not going to do anything too sharp because if you do anything too sharp, you can then start affecting the phasing of certain elements. So that can kind of run into some problems. But the other side of that, if you maybe click on to linear phase, that's more of a error correction tool. So if you've got say a bass drum and a kick or sorry, a kick drum and a bass line that's sort of clashing and the phase in things are cancelling out due to phase, then you can stick this into linear phase and you can low cut your low end. And then you're going to be safe in the knowledge that the magnitude curve is then going to be fitting in with it nicely and you can sort of cancel out 
any phase cancellation that's going in it. It does sound like a bit of a mouthful and it is a little bit complicated. And as I say, it is a topic all on its own to learn about, but there's definitely loads of resources out there that you can look up and it will explain it a bit further. More importantly, the FabFilter Pro-Q2 PDF manual guide actually explains a bit more about it. And it's got a couple of links within the PDF that you can click on that will then tell you further about it and explain a bit about the processing mode types and what they're best used on. But I would definitely stick with either zero latency or natural phase, and you can't really go wrong. Those two will be the ones that you'd be predominantly using. Then to the right of that, we have channel mode. So we have a mid side or a left and right. So I've spoken about this in quite a few other videos, and there's plenty of other videos within this sort of set of modules within uh, Sonic Academy that explain about what left and right and mid side are. So basically your left and right is your left and right speaker. Mid side is mono and stereo field. So you can then attenuate the mono or you can sort of boost stuff in the highs to give it a presence of a bit more of a higher sheen, bring out the presence a little bit that way. Then to the right of that, we have our analyzer. So that's basically what our interactive window is going to be showing us. So you can show pre, pre basically pre effects and post effects and you've also got your side chain there as well you can change the range so basically how much of the dynamic range is going to be shown within the interactive window and then the resolution basically how many points you're going to be working with so if i put that up to low and then pr press play so you're getting quite a lot of curves and you're not getting that finite detail but then if i stick that on high or maximum you can see that we're getting a lot more points along there to then work with and try and go in and attenuate some of those frequencies. Then the speed is quite self-explanatory, so how quickly it's going to be moving. So if I go on very slow, then press play. So it kind of does a gradual change to each individual frequency, but then if I go on very fast, you can notice it goes a bit quicker. So I tend to keep it on medium. I can't really see any benefit of having it slow and quick because of the other features that it's got on here, which I'll explain in a minute. Then you've got your tilts, so that's basically just how much of a magnitude curve that you're going to be seeing within that as well. And then the bottom here, this relates to the speed, which I was mentioning about, so you don't necessarily need it on very fast, so we can always put that back on medium. And then it's going to basically, this button here, the freeze button, is then going to freeze our audio spectrum so that we can have it up there giving us a basic average of what our element is doing or our track is doing. So if I click freeze then press play, you can then see that it's actually starting to give us a more average idea of what our track is actually doing. And then you can also do the similar thing if you click on this button here and then take off freeze. And then when it's playing, we hover our mouse over the spectrum, it will then pause it for when we need it basically. Okay, so it's not constantly doing a freeze thing. So that gives us the toggle option, if you like, to then go off that and then back on that. So that, again, is a really powerful tool. Then next to that, we've got EQ Match, which basically listens out to the average of the spectrum, and then it will give us that EQ curve, which it will then put on there. So it will give us loads of different little bands, which will then change to then match what our actual thing is our element is actually doing and then the powerful thing about that is then we can then invert that to then fit in with another element so if you've got two like maybe a vocal and a synth that are quite mid-rangey you can then get them fitting together like a jigsaw because that's kind of what EQing is you want it to fit like a jigsaw which is again a really powerful tool then to the right of that we obviously have our sort of control options or our output options if you like so we can sort of put the output level up higher or we can put it down lower or anything like that and we can pan it left and right as well then like i mentioned we've got our metering there which just toggles on and off and then to the left of that this is a really powerful tool as well this is an auto gain feature now what this does if you're doing any boosts or any reductive eq edits then the output gain is going to basically self-level. So you're not going to be boosting any volume. You're just going to be basically taking out any of those frequencies, but then it's going to boost everything else up so you're not losing anything. So you're changing and sculpting the sound of it, but you're not necessarily adding or taking away any volume. So that's a real powerful way to really hone in on your EQ game. So definitely, definitely use that feature. Then we have a polarity or phase inversion. So if you've got anything that's not sitting right within the left and the right field, you can just invert that and see if that fixes any sort of problems that you've got. That'll probably work best if you've got the 
linear phase option enabled as well because if something's not quite working your kick drums or your bass drums are not quite sitting together sometimes just a phase inversion can sometimes help that and also you want to try and do it so that you've got nothing sitting too heavy in the left and right fields so then if you invert it if you've got it then swapping over to the right you might not necessarily want that harsh of a panning difference if you like <clears throat> again sort of phase inversion is another topic which we'll probably cover in a future video then up here to the left of that, we have a global bypass button. So you can either use that just to switch it all off or you can use the button on here within Logic Pro 10. But I know maybe Ableton that might come in handy because I'm not sure there's a sort of a bypass function when you've got the plugin window open. So on other DAWs that could come in handy as well. Then to the bottom right here, we have basically a window enlarger. So you can either have it small or you can have it medium or large or anything like that. So that's a real powerful way to have it. I've got quite a large screen here. So for me, having extra large works really well and combined with the fact that we can have it in full screen as well. So they can really hone in on editing any certain frequencies or fixing any things like that. Then again, that is really, really powerful as well. So, so there's plenty of powerful tools within this Pro-Q2. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to use this particular plugin and what scenarios it's going to work best on. So it's going to be a lot of these features are going to be more easily explained in the next video. So I've been Rory from Harper Production. You've been watching Sonic Academy and I shall see you on the next video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.